In this video, we're going to talk about receptors, which are molecules that are involved in cell signaling. These are the molecules that receive the signal. Now, we're going to look at a number of different types of receptors, and the first one we're going to take a look at are G-protein coupled receptors. And these are transmembrane protein receptors. And the reason they're called G-protein coupled receptors is because they work with these molecules called G proteins, which are also proteins as their name would imply. Now G proteins are called G proteins because G proteins use GTP and GDP to work. Now you might remember that GTP is kind of similar to ATP. That little squiggle is supposed to mean similar, something like that. And GDP is kind of like G or ADP rather. So remember, ATP is the form that can be broken down to release energy and it is broken down into ADP. So ADP is not the form used to supply things with energy. That is the ATP form. And the same is true of GTP and GDP. GTP is used to activate G proteins, and G proteins are inactive when they have GDP in them. So this G protein here actually has GDP in it. And what's going to happen is some hormone, or any ligand really, any ligand, can be a hormone, is going to bind to this G protein coupled receptor right here. And that's going to change the shape of the receptor so that it can interact with the G protein. And what's going to happen is this G protein that's inactive is going to interact with the receptor and it's going to swap GTP for the GDP it had. And this is going to activate it. So this, let me scroll down a little here so it's easier to see. This activates the G protein. And then that G protein is going to go off and start a signal transduction pathway. And that's something we're going to talk about in the next video. Now, before we move on from G-protein coupled receptors, I want to talk about one more thing. And that has to do with their structure. You see, G-protein coupled receptors have seven transmembrane domains. And this is something characteristic of these proteins. So one nice way to identify G-protein coupled receptor is by its one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, transmembrane domains. Now, another type of receptor is a receptor are, is called receptor tyrosine kinase, or RTK. And I'm just going to call it RTK because it's a lot easier to say. So receptor tyrosine kinases are special because they can activate multiple pathways at once. Now, how these work is a little more complicated. You see, Receptor tyrosine kinases are actually separate. These two components of the receptor are separate. Oops, spelled that wrong. Separate, okay. So they're separate and what's gonna happen is they're going to bind these ligands, right? Here we have ligands. So they're going to bind these ligands, and that's going to cause them to become attached. So now these are attached. And we call this uh, whole receptor here, when they're attached, we call that a dimer, right? So when two proteins come together to form a functional unit, we call that a dimer. So here, 
they're attached, they are now a dimer. Okay, so once that happens, then six ATP are used and turn into six ADP and phosphorylate. See here, they phosphorylate the receptor tyrosine kinase. Now this is in its active form. And why these, uh, these receptors can activate multiple pathways at once is because they have all those phosphate groups. And remember, kinases, kinases are enzymes that transfer a phosphate group to their substrate, right? They phosphorylate their substrate. So this uh, receptor tyrosine kinase with its six phosphates, it can phosphorylate six things at once, right? So it can activate multiple pathways. Let me take myself out of the image here. And you can see it can activate multiple pathways at the same time. That's what's so special about these receptors. All right, let's turn the page.